1999 uh, Canadian aircraft participated in bombing Serbia. I was working in an office at the time in eastern Canada, New Brunswick, um, and there was about 600 of us in this office, and unique in that part of the country, or not unique but rare, was a Serbian woman, and she just moved to Canada, and she had the delightful treat of watching her new country bomb her old country. Uh, she arrived in Canada thinking, what a wonderful place it is, and then this happens, and you go, oh my god. Um, nasty situation for her to be in. So, somebody in our office organized um, a great big um, flower arrangement, fairly expensive, got a collection from the entire office, and flooded this woman's workstation with flowers and things like this. No message, no nothing. Just that we understand. Um, this is must be horrible for you, and we're trying to make you make a statement that we understand um, that this is hard for you. We might not really get it to the extent that it is, but we this can't be easy for you. We want to help you. Um, she was deeply touched by this reduced to tears because she'd kept it to herself, but it did bother her that this was happening intensely. She had family back in Serbia. Canadian bombs were dropping on them. Um, wasn't that a nice thing for this person to do who organized all of this, right? Wasn't that a nice thing for that person to do? Um, nice little anecdote, right? All right, this is a true story. This actually happened. It's nothing spectacular. I'm the person that organized all of this. I did all of this. Aren't I a great guy? <laughs> Think about that. Um, what if I were to have started by saying, back in 1999, I did all this. I helped this person. I reduced her to tears of gratitude, etc. I did all of this. Um, there's egoism in just about everything, right? Um, would it have been better if I hadn't done it? No. But we've got this strange, I understand it, but a strange and unthought out bias against self-promotion, especially when one is doing good. You're specifically told in our culture not to broadcast your good deeds. Okay, but you should broadcast other people's good deeds. If you want to criticize yourself, that's fine. But don't toot your own horn. Um, Canadians especially have this disease. Canadians are known all over the world for being self-effacing. And I think it's all a big act, to be honest. I think it's a species of nationalism. Aren't we Canadians wonderful? We're so self-effacing. We're so humble. Uh, we're so polite. We're so um, un-American in, in the way that we behave. Don't you, doesn't the world wish that um, Americans were as nice as Canadians are type thing? I think that there's a deep subconscious uh, um, strain of that sort of thing in Canadian thinking in as much as a Canadian identity even exists. Doesn't work that way with just about all ethical behavior when you're trying to be ethical. Um, what does it mean to try to be ethical? Are you trying to be ethical, or are you trying to persuade other people that you're ethical? Those are not the same thing at all. And this is where denunciation comes in, and misanthropy, and hidden, um, hidden, <coughs> hidden motives that one can never really prove, right? Um, as I said in the video that I screwed up the attributions for so spectacularly yesterday. Um, I believe that that um, nice-looking young woman who carefully made a video making herself look beautiful and virginal and pleasant and unassuming and everything um, probably had a large dose of self-aggrandizement in there. And I also said, please try to understand. She's a human and humans do this. It's not. It doesn't make her evil or duplicitous or tricky or anything. Um, 
It just means that we do want others to see us as moral people, ethical, good people. Um, I don't think this is necessarily inherent in humans, but it's inherent in the way that our ethical system has gone in the last 2,000 years, in the West at least. Um, the Far East and in India, it's not doesn't quite work like that. The interesting example is the one that the Western world now is really active in denouncing the living hell out of, and that's the self-aggrandizement or ethical self-aggrandizement that we constantly accuse the Islamic world of. All you people say that you Muslims are wonderful, peaceful people, and you probably believe it, and you believe that we're evil people who have no morals and no sense of honor and no sense of justice and no sense of propriety and all this sort of thing. But we see how you actually live, and I don't know, I'm not convinced that um, cutting off a young woman's clitoris without anesthetic is the sign of a moral person. I understand that you might be doing it for some vague concern for her to get a husband later in life, but again, that kind of honor ethics is pretty insane because, um, you know, killing your own relatives to prove how honorable you are, if, I don't know, you're, you're kind of turning your own code, your own view up uh, on its head. You're sort of saying that keeping an honorable reputation is an end in itself, not actually doing what is actually good. Um, that's the big criticism that we have of honor ethics. Now, the Islamic world is only doing what everybody else does, but they're doing it in such a naive, slightly cru crude way um, that everyone can see right through it immediately uh, and say, that's, that's horseshit. You're not, you're not really uh, being honorable here. You're not really being ethical. You just want everybody else to think that you are. And... Um, the Islamic world strikes us as a place where extreme denunciation takes place all the time. Public executions, public stonings, and which is actually extremely rare in the Islamic world, but I guess it does take place in Iran and Saudi Arabia. Um, all that that is meant to do is to not to actually promote goodness, it's just to show that the people in charge of our society are very tough on badness. And we'd better, um, you know, we're we're so we're such moral people because we're so ruthless with the immoral. It's self-aggrandizement. It's ego. Um, I spoke to a Christian Arab um, who had moved to Canada uh, once about the issue of honor, and he was kind of totally against it in some ways because he said it really is when you get beneath the surface, it's pure ego egoism. It's just. I just want to keep a reputation of being an honorable person, actually, whether, whether or not um, I do any good is I never even crosses my mind. It's just, I live in a culture where honor is important, so I want to be an honorable person because it makes me an important person in this culture and everybody will look up to me, so I act honorably. It's like that old dodge about um, Puritan um, humility. The Puritans really valued humility very important virtue to them and they looked down upon everybody who wasn't as you know humble as they were now isn't that cute how that works that's what the previous video if you ask me did and Andreas Moss asked me about um, misanthropy um, Gavlov did as well and I want to make something clear here misanthropy can mean many things misanthropy can be um, well human beings are a blight on this planet so we're the cosmos is better off without us. Okay, that's one species of misanthropy. Then there's human beings are absolute piles of excrement who deserve to be tortured forever for all eternity. It's a different kind of misanthropy. That's hate, right? Um, in the antinatalist paradigm, I think that there's a fair amount of both, right? There's misanthropic but sort of philosophical misanthropic, well, it's unfortunate that we're so bad, but it's better off that we don't exist type thing. And then there's just blind, angry hatred that is really a desire to punish. Um, that's in there as well. But it, again, I only use antinatalism, not for... because I think there's anything wrong with antinatalism. I don't. But what I'm saying is it's ethics by denunciation that fascinates me here and metacommunication that doesn't match what people are actually saying, and it seems like it's a deliberate subterfuge. Um, people who are 
full of hate, anger, and a desire to harm others or to punish others, all in the name of empathy, strike me as that Puritan who's so proud of how humble he is. Um, there's a flip side to everything that has to do with humans. And there's more than one flip side. This goes all the way back to perspectivism, doesn't it? In what ways is something moral and in what ways is it not? Okay, you might think that smothering a young woman's desk with flowers while she's going through something fairly traumatic is a nice thing to do. Yes, it is in some ways. In some ways it isn't. In some ways it's simple self-aggrandizement. Who gets to decide? Well, the only person who really can tell is the person who's actually engaged in that kind of activity. Um, even then, though, can they tell? Can you, do you have such a good lock on your own motives that you can say that you're doing everything that you do for the right reasons? Lucky you if you do, I suppose. But um, I think that there's an enormous amount of self-delusion that's taking place there. An enormous amount of conscious delusion of other people, or conscious deluding of other people.